Welcome back all. So today we're going to be taking a look at E's new Smart Hub Pro and Smart Wi-Fi Pro with Wi-Fi 7. Right, probably seems like I'm never away from doing videos about the internet, but uh, hey, anyway. Um, so if you've been a follower of my channel, you've seen maybe some of the recent videos about some of the issues I've had uh, when I was trying to get full fibre installed. Um, and ultimately I've ended up with E and uh, touch wood, so far so good. Um, but recently I've started getting emails and text messages and seen adverts on television about their all new Wi-Fi 7 with their new Wi-Fi um, Pro Hub. Um, and I decided I'd give them a bell ask them if it's a possibility to get it and sure enough they're obliged and um, they've actually sent out their new equipment. Um, so what I'll do in this video is I'll do a quick unboxing of the two devices and then I'll, uh, I'll have a little discussion about the difference between this new hub and the previous Smart Hub Plus. So as before we've got some nice plain packaging we've got with the, the other hub. A couple of little security tabs here, uh, one on one side. Now we've got one on the other side. Let's cut these open with a knife and we'll get into the box, see what we've got. Not expecting much to be honest. So right away we're greeted with the, the nice white hub. But on the lid here we've also got some uh, pamphlets or leaflets. This one's a QR code for downloading the app. And uh, once you've got the app installed you can run through the, the setup process through the app itself. Hopefully everything's self-explanatory for you if, if you're going to go down that route. But if you don't want to use the app, we've also got this little booklet here, which also shows you how to set things up. Some little diagrams, some details there, and get you up and running, hopefully. So yeah, back to the hub itself, completely different shape from the last one. More little stocky hub. But under here, uh, we have, what have we got in here? Right, okay, so we've got a, a WAN cable. Uh, I don't know if anything's different from a WAN cable and a LAN cable, they're not all just Ethernet cables. But anyway, uh, a WAN cable with the red connections on the end there. And this cable is uh, 2 metres in length. Checked out earlier for you. So 2 metres, nice kind of solid feeling cable. And we've also got the power plug here. Obviously being in the UK we've got a, a 3 pin connection. And again, I've measured this, um, and the length of this cable is actually three meters, which is pretty good. Um, just in the off chance that your closest wall socket's a fair bit away from your your internet connection in the wall or and at your home, so that is that. Just two cables, and back to the hub again. So yeah, different shape. Obviously, this one's white compared to the black. At the front here, we've got status LEDs as they had in the old ones. Up the top we've got some perforation here for uh, letting the heat out, nice solid white plastic feel to it, plenty of weight in it. At the bottom here we have the power connection and then we've got a little notch just to keep the, tie, uh, the cable all tidy and neat. Four little rubber pads, in the back here we've got this little card uh, which gives you the details of your network name and your password, so obviously I can't show you that but you would take that off um, to get the details of the, the router. On the back here we've also got a WPS button and another nice little feature here is we've got braille for uh, our customers that are get issues with the site. We've got a reset button as well, USB connection here, power button and a phone connection in case you decide to go down the route of getting a digital phone. Here we have the one connection which goes into the wall socket and then we've got the four LAN connections. So it's pretty much all the same kind of connections as on the, the previous one, but totally different design, shape and size. Speaking of sizes, I'll just get the tape measure out and I'll get some rough measurements. So height wise, it's about 230 millimetres. And the width, I would say, is about 110. Uh, yeah, I'd say about 110. Let's see if I can get measurements for the top, if that makes it any easier to see. So yeah, about 110 wide and about 120 millimetres deep. And then onto the, the Smart Wi-Fi Pro. Again, I'm not expecting much to be in here. 
a couple of security tabs here, just need to cut through. I'll get you into the gubbins inside the box. And again, it's pretty much the same stuff. We've got uh, the Wi-Fi Pro. The same sort of leaflets we've got in the other one. Showing you how to connect up with the app and so on. It is, it's the exact same leaflet. Stick it with to the side and see what else we've got. I'll just lift out the, the power plug. And again, the length of this uh, cable is three metres as it was with the other one, which is a, a nice generous length of cable. But instead of the one cable, we get a LAN cable with this. And this cable is only one metre long, but that's kind of be, uh, to be expected. You're going to have this set up in a, in a different room somewhere beside some other pieces of equipment. So it's, it's natural that the the Wi-Fi um, Pro Hub thing here would be positioned close to whatever you're going to use it with. And the back onto the power leads. I don't know why I'm going over this. I've just pretty much told you before. It is three metres long. And again, a three pin connection for us folk here in the UK. And then the last thing is the Wi-Fi hub itself. Narrower design in the main hub, but pretty much the same, same build, same material, solid plastic, same little status indicator at the front, which is a nice and green colour when it's everything's A-OK. -okay. You've got some ventilation up the top to let the heat out. Same power connection at the bottom with the four little rubber feet as well. And again, we've got this little notch at the back for uh, cable management, just keeping everything flat on the table or uh, the desk, whatever we're going to put this on. We've got a WPS button at the back, but no braille this time for some reason. Small reset button, and then we've got the two LAN connections. And the power button just below that. But if I bring the other one in side by side, you'll see... In fact, first things first, I'll uh, take measurements of this as well, seeing as I did it with the other one. So this is about 170 millimetres deep. If you can see that in the screen here. Yep. Height-wise, it's about 220 millimetres. And width is about 50 millimetres. You probably ask why I do these things, but people have got cabinets and stuff. Uh, oh, sorry, just down the bottom here at 60 millimetres. Yeah, people have got cabinets and shelves and what have you, you put these things on, so I always think it's good to know the size, um, just in case you fancy tucking these away out of the way. But if we put them side by side, you can see how they look. Nice kind of modern look. Right, as you probably expected, there's not a lot in these boxes nowadays. Um, they try to keep everything to a minimum, obviously. Keeping an iron waste packaging and stuff like that, so yeah, you, you don't tend to get a lot in the, the boxes. But um, now that I've done unboxing, what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, jump onto the EE website and I'll actually cover the differences between the two hubs. If I pick the right screen that is, right here we go. So on the website, if you scroll down, um, you can see the new Smart Hub Pro which I've got in the previous Smart Hub Plus. So right away the differences is the new hub is Wi-Fi 7 and the old hub is Wi-Fi 6. Um, at the moment I don't actually have any Wi-Fi 7 devices but I'm planning to get a new motherboard and processor and so on which will be Wi-Fi 7 and I'm also due a new phone upgrade in February um, and it will have Wi-Fi 7 capability. So going forward it's obviously a, a little bit of protection just being able to have this this new hub and covering all Wi-Fi 7 devices. Um, wireless capability should also point out, sorry just before we go any further, this website's changed a few times. At one stage it said that this new hub say, basically had seven antennas in it, whereas this one had six, and it's now disappeared from their website. So I don't know if that's true or whether it was just somebody was assuming there was six six antennas and seven, and seven antennas based on the Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 6. That would be too much a coincidence. So I may do a little bit more digging about 
on that to actually find out how many antennas is actually the Smart Hub Pro, but it did say at one stage there was seven, and for this there was six, but I thought I'd just point that out. It's, it's been removed for some reason. Um, wireless capability, new one has tri-band, the old one has dual band, so you can see right away here, we've got 2.4 gigahertz, 4x4, 5 gigahertz, and this new 6 gigahertz capability. Um, and you can see the, the old capabilities here of the old hub. For the wired connections, same amount of ports on the back, but you'll notice now on the new hub, we have four 2.5 gigabytes per second LAN connections, where previously it was four, point, uh, four times one gigabyte LAN connections. Um, so nice wee upgrade there, pretty much getting full speed on those. Um, and it's still the same one by 2.5 gigabytes per second WAN connection. So supported broadband technology, this is full fibre only. Um, I actually thought this was full fibre only as well, but you can see here part fibre on selected models, so I'm not quite sure how that would work. Maybe fibre to the, the cabinet or something like that, and then old copper wire cables to the to the modem or to the router, I don't know, I'm not quite sure how that worked. Multiple SSIDs, yes on both, but only um, with the old hub, it was only on selected models and software. We've also got the ability to set up guest Wi-Fi, which was also on the previous one. What's new to this hub is, there's a near field connection, I think that stands for NFC, doesn't it? Um, basically for any guests, they can quickly attach to your, your Wi-Fi, uh, the guest Wi-Fi you've got set up, rather than digging out um, passwords and so on. Uh, and obviously the old one didn't have the contactless um, option. Parental controls and security are advanced, which was the same in the old one. Smart Wi-Fi extender support was yes on both of them. But for the Wi-Fi Pro Hub, um, we now have the E Smart Wi-Fi Pro, where it was the Wi-Fi Plus in the old one. Smart Hybrid Connect support was available on the old one and still there in the new one. And then obviously the sustainability with the, the package and so on, keeping the, the world nice and green. So regarding setting this up, it was a, it was a doddle. Two wires for my, my situation, and actually lie, three wires for my situation. Um, the one power cable, plugs into the bottom of it. The WAN cable coming from the router, plugging into the, the internet connection to the wall uh, that was provided by OpenReach. And I've also got my Xbox hooked up to um, one of the LAN ports so that I can take advantage of the full speed of the, um, the downloads for the Xbox. There's a very, very good reason for that. Um, the previous setup that I had, I only had the wireless box um, or the, the, the one hub now that I have this additional hub, the, the Wi-Fi Pro Hub, I'm actually going to set that up uh, in my son's room. He's also got an Xbox and everything connected by Wi-Fi in his room. And as a result of that, um, I think, if I remember right, the Xbox download speed on Wi-Fi is capped to something like 250 megs a second. Might, it might not be that figure, but it's, it's round about there. So he's not getting full advantage of the, the, the true internet speed that we've got just now. Um, so I'm going to put this little uh, extender box into his room and then I'll actually attach the one of the LAN cables from the back of the box into his Xbox and hopefully he'll be getting uh, even higher speeds in there for downloading games and so on. So um, I'll maybe make a little video later on just uh, keeping you up to date with how that went on. Regards to speeds, nothing's going to change speed wise. It's still the same speed that's coming in, but earlier on, and, and I'll pop these up on the screen just now, I ran two separate tests. One was the test with the good old faithful Ocala website. Um, you can see the speeds that I was getting on that, which is pretty good. Um, and also I ran a test from the actual EE um, app itself, which gives you direct speeds to the, the router itself um, prior to it going to any other devices connected up to the router. So you will see the figure at the top, which is the true speed going to the router, and then below was the, the speed that the my phone that was running the test on was actually um, picking up off the Wi-Fi. Um, I keep noticing something on my screen, I actually keep shitting myself here, thinking I've got a dead pixel on my screen, but 
I'm going to try and point it out. There, there's a really annoying speckle. <laughs> I thought it was a dead pixel on my monitor, but it's not, and I've cleaned the lens, so maybe my camera's on its way. It's a good reason to get another one. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so that was it. Unboxing, how to connect it. Should also say as well, um, is once as I had this up and running, I read some of the details and when you set up a new hub through the app, there's supposed to be an ability to, it's like port all the details from your old hub onto your new one. So basically it gives it the same um, network name and it gives it the same password and so on so that you don't have to go and reconnect all your devices. Uh, I couldn't get on the, the, the app at all. Just kept crashing out on me and um, saying there was a problem, try again. Tried and tried and tried and tried and then a couple of hours later I was actually sitting in the living room and I noticed the the little um, the icon in the front of the, the, the router, the, the status LED was changing to orange which I'm assuming was some sort of update or something was getting run, it was flashing and then it about went back to solar green to see everything was okay. At that point I tried the app and sure enough the app was running, I could actually get into all the normal features that you would expect to see on the e-app with all the, the the network controls and stuff lighted in speed tests um, as you can see I did run a speed test um, and the option was there at that point to port over the old settings from the old router to the new one to save me setting everything up again but it was too late by that point I'd already done it because the app kept crashing so just in case that happens to you um, give it a bit of time Get things set up in your phone and then maybe give it a couple of hours. Must Some sort of update must come through to allow it to start talking to the app. And then after that, you can then do the, the transfer thing. Or you can just do what I've done and just punch in the, the new network name and the new password in the, to all your devices, which takes fucking ages. <laughs> right, anyway, um, hope you like this. If you get any questions, um, please feel free to add some comments below. And as always, if you could please leave a like and subscribe. I'm trying to push towards that 1,000 subscriber mark, which is taking forever. But I would appreciate it if you could subscribe. And hopefully, once again, I'll see you guys soon. See you later.